Breaking news out of Dubai, where just about half an hour ago, a plane made an emergency landing on its belly after its landing gear failed, possibly caught fire in midair on final approach. Everyone on board evacuated safely. Now, the Emirates airline Boeing 777-300 was en route from India and scheduled to land at the Dubai International Airport. There were 275 people on board. No injuries have been reported, as we said, everyone making it off safely. Well, right now, departures out of the airport are grounded. So far, though, no word on what may have caused the problem. What a mess at Young and College this morning. A uh, suspected drunk driver making a U-turn, going over a curb and right into a milk delivery truck, narrowly missing the driver of the truck who was outside unloading the product. It was in a Mercedes SUV, ran right into the back of the truck, was parked about 3.30 this morning, making a delivery. The uh, driver of the SUV is in custody and uh, failed the roadside breath check. At this point, uh, police say they're not crying over spilled milk. I knew that was Sorry. Funny. Very sorry. Well, a man in his 30s rushed to hospital after a drive-by shooting near Lawrence and Scarlet Road around 3 this morning. The victim is in stable condition, serious though, with wounds to his legs. Police still investigating. So far, no word on any arrests or description of suspects. If you were with us about this time yesterday, Winston told us all about Pokemon Go creators helping people or saying people can soon opt out of having their locations used as Pokestops. Well, here in Toronto, a Pokemon No Go Zone could be in the works for the ferry terminal. I remember we showed you the video of the giant crowds at the ferry terminal on holiday Monday. Now, a lot of this problem was for a new online fare system that really didn't work all that well. But another problem were Pokemon players making the crowd even larger and getting in the way. So the city is working with uh, the developer to try and stop people from playing the popular game at the terminal. The city says it's a federal court. The congestion caused uh, by the players who flock there is serious and impacting ferry service both to and from the islands. The uh, site is currently home to 10 Pokestops and gyms, a key feature of the game for players. Meanwhile, a man in New Jersey has filed a class action lawsuit after people were lingering outside of his home trying to catch them all. The lawsuit in the works is against Nanantic, Nintendo, and the Pokemon Company. The man says strangers began lingering outside his home, even some knocking on his door. He claims the companies have shown a flagrant disregard for consequences of populating the real world with virtual Pokemon without any permission from property owners. And folks, we're only getting started with the AR games. Like, yeah. There's more probably going to be released Slippers. soon. Uh, there you go. R.A. Dickey delivers in Texas, helping the Jays edge the Astros. Third inning as we pick it up. Batista the dish with two out. Is that right, Buck? Number 300 for Joey Bats. The kid in the stands who got that ball kindly gave it back to Jose in exchange for a trip to the clubhouse, as well as assigned bat balls and jersey. Not bad, not a bad deal. Good trade. Next inning, Eddie's turn. Let's take that parrot for a walk around the bases. 2-0 Toronto. And kudos to our pitching staff. Dickey goes seven innings, giving up one run, no walks, five strikeouts. In his first ever Major League game, Danny Barnes, a call-up from Buffalo, works a solid score to his eighth inning. With Drilly closing the nine for the win, 2-1, your final. And here now is a baseball highlight of the morning, making the rounds. Toronto-born ball player Joey Votto dressing down a fan who interfered with a play. Happens all the time, right? The Cardinals in Cincinnati. There's a pop-up there, drifting into the stands. Cincinnati's Joey Votto tries to make the catch, but the fan gets in the way there, as you can see. So Votto then grabs the fan by the shirt, pointing out that the guy is supposed to be cheering for Cincinnati, and then he walks away. Well, I guess Votto felt bad about the interaction. He he spotted signing a baseball there in the dugout, and then he visits the fan afterwards, giving him the souvenir with an apology note written on it. Isn't that sweet? Thanking the fan for being understanding. No. Nice of him. No, it's no. He shouldn't. 
He even takes pictures with him. The guy should have been. Should, fans should not be that close to the action. I've said it before. This, 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 is a, this is a common occurrence. There shouldn't be a way a fan can interfere with, with that. Plate, just doing this. You know, it, it's just, it, it's a baseball. Go buy one. And, and, and you know what? He had no reason to apologize to him. He didn't, gra you know, he didn't really grab him by the shirt of some some media thing. Like like, hey, look, yeah, you got like, Cincinnati look. on your shirt. And you're supposed to be cheering for exactly. them. Exactly. You know what? Because Joey Votto is a polite Canadian boy. That's why he did it. He felt uh, bad. That's why. All right.